Hey guys, today I'm going to review my Water Eclipse HPCS and my Water Eclipse HPCS. This one's been converted to 0.5, so you can say I'm doing a comparison review. It actually shocked me to realize that I had never done a review on the Iwata Eclipse HPCS, since it's basically my favorite airbrush of all time and probably one of the most popular airbrushes of all time. Anyway, I want to start breaking it down, take a look at it. As we get further into it, we'll do some spray and test patterns, and we'll see what weaknesses and strength it has. Okay, a quick note just when I'm getting started is... These last letters on these, when they're stamped on there, these are date codes. So the this one, the bottle feed, this one was made in 2014. That R means 2014. The Z on this means 2016. And the T on this one means 2021. One thing you will notice on pretty much any Iwata airbrush that you ever pick up is you're going to notice how everything is very well machined very polished, you will find pretty much no defects ever. Now, one of the things that makes this trigger on the Iwata Eclipse better than on cheap brushes and similar other, other Japanese airbrushes are the same, is this is flat. Instead of just left rounded, this is flat, polished off. This one has showing a little bit of brass here, but it's probably not the trigger from this 2021 airbrush, probably one from a very old airbrush. So when this rides on that assembly, being that it's flat, you get less wiggle and movement. It keeps things a little more stable. All of the parts are interchangeable between the HPCS, the HPBCS, and the HPSBS, which has now been discontinued in favor of the Takumi. The Takumi's got a couple small differences, but most of the parts will interchange. So in order to convert one from 0.35, like this one's set up, to 0.5, you will need a needle, a nozzle, and a nozzle cap is how Iwata calls these. They call this part the head cap and this part the nozzle cap some manufacturers name them differently the re the way you can tell the difference between these caps between a 0.35 and a 0.5 is that line on there do you see there is a line on the 0.35 nozzle cap and there is no line on the 0.5 nozzle cap Doing a comparison on the needle and the nozzles, and you see the difference there. And you'll see how the taper is a little bit more gradual. In other words, the angle is less aggressive on the 0.35 than it is on the 0.5. But it is not a huge difference. Now, I expected, and as expected, the nozzle on the 0.5 airbrush is a little bit cheaper than the nozzle on the 0.35. And that's kind of expected because it's more machining work for them to create that two-piece nozzle that they make for the 0.35. But it did surprise me that the cap and the needle are also cheaper on the 0.5 setup. And I'll leave you guys a link for the those three parts that you would need to convert one. I'll also leave you a link for this airbrush if y'all want to shop for one. And let's get back to it. Okay, now we're going to look at the front of the brush. Now, one of the things that makes the, the Eclipse work the way it does is, one, you have the three air holes that come around and then come over. But one of the things is the opening around the nozzle is... A little wider than on a, say a detail brush which means more air is coming out of the brush and that is a good thing when you're dealing with thick paints and because they have refined their manufacturing process and dialed this in very well over the years you really don't lose a lot of small detail except in some circumstances is how far you have to push down the trigger that is from fully open to fully closed and it is just over one millimeters the trigger is very smooth on the eclipse but it's a little firmer than some people like you can always back off this screw to get a lighter feel myself i like that firm feel so i've always got mine cranked up and it just provides a nice smooth 
firm feel and it's very rapid return and very accurate response. So I set my pressure regulator at 30 PSI. I put gold and high flow straight in the cup. Using my finger as a guide, I said I came out just over three inches away from the surface and I'm going to see what the largest pattern of spray the 0.35 is and I'm going to see what the largest spray diameter a point the point 0.5 lays out as you can see it's clearly bigger and we can measure that out it's about 23 millimeters and about 28 29 millimeters for the point 0.5 and as you doodle it with this and come in here with doing some line work still working with the unreduced paint right now both airbrushes perform pretty much almost exactly the same putting a little reducer in there we're going to go in here and do a little bit of finer lines these aren't the finest i can get but we're going to compare that in a moment to one of the finest technical pens i have so you can compare the line size between a technical pencil and the lines that those are and you can actually even get tighter than this with the eclipse of course you can do blending and shading with ease and being able to doodle freehand work and stuff like that it's going to be pretty much similar between the 0.35 and the 0.5 both of them are extraordinarily capable airbrushes at doing work like that. Just showing you guys for the guys that do models and stuff like that. Iridescent straight Createx iridescent paints flow through these either one of these brushes without any problem. Didn't add any reducer to these at all. They're just straight out of the bottle. And that's the 0.35 laying out on this test spoon. And then we're going to go ahead and use the 0.5 even though... The results should be very, very predictable that it's going to look almost exactly the same. Uh, the 0.5 will do a little bit better as we get into larger pearl dimensions and some of the minor metallics. And of course, these brushes are very easy to clean out. All I got to do is rinse through there and I'm going to move right over and go to some UVLS high gloss. This is going to show where I find it starts to fall down. In As I've mentioned before, with the UVLS high gloss, you really want to lay that at low pressures and you want that volume to come out pretty heavily. So I had to reduce this UVLS high gloss more than I wanted to. And of course, it's got more air speed and air pressure than I would like. And I will show you a picture in a moment of UVLS in a perfect environment and then UVLS sprayed with the HPCS. So for basic airbrushing, this is probably all you'll ever need. For very, very tiny micro airbrushing, a detail airbrush is going to atomize the paint a little bit finer and it's going to create those small blends just a little bit better. And then if you're wanting to get into heavier pearls or like laying in the gloss on the UVLS and modelers and stuff, some other brayer brushes would probably do that portion better. I tend to use my Badger Omni for that or the TimberTech AG183K that I recently did a review on for those larger things because it comes with a 0.8. But other than that, I absolutely love this airbrush. I use it all the time. I use it both in the 0.35 and the 0.5 configurations. They just both do some so much work for me and I can do 95% of all the work I do with those airbrushes. Anyway, guys, that's going to be a wrap. Hopefully you got something out of this video today. And if you like it, throw me a thumbs up. Maybe discuss it down below and maybe hit the subscribe button. I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. Y'all have a great day. Bye.